All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back. I know it's been a minute. I had to take the weekend off just to relax a little bit for a change. Been going a little bit too hard. You know, you can, sometimes you got to take a little bit of break, and that's, what, that's what's going on. But here we are. We're back again. Quote for the day, real quick, is if uncertainty is unacceptable to you, it turns into fear. If it is perfectly acceptable, it turns into increased aliveness, alertness, and creativity. And I forgot to mention it up front, but today's episode, we're going to be talking about some general uh, trading basics, some of the lingo, things like that. And particularly right now with the way things have been dipping and going down, there's a lot of FUD going on. If you don't know what FUD is, it is fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And largely that's coming from, you know, everybody thinking it's the end of the world, basically. You know, they have that little uh, fear and greed index. I'm not even going to bring it up because who cares, but... You know, you could tell whether it be crypto, YouTube, or Twitter, or Instagram, or any of that good stuff that, uh, you know, you get a lot of people who see, who see this nice little cascading waterfall right there, this little dripping blood on the chart, that, uh, you know, they start talking the bear market thing, start saying it's the end of the world, or are we going down to 20k, and this, that, and the other, and you know what, we might be. Frankly, I don't care. And you know what? As soon as you stop caring, you know, it's it's a lot less stressful. It really is. You know, the, the FUD doesn't get to you anymore. You know, the, the regulation thing, yeah, it'll get me a little bit heated and I might, you know, start cursing a little bit, which I've been doing better at, I think. But, you know, you can't let the FUD get to you just because... It really doesn't matter. And that's the point of trading. And that's the difference between trading and investing is, you know, if you are investing, you are looking more long term, particularly, then yeah, you know, these, these macro trends are kind of running your emotional responses to, you know, Bitcoin and crypto and all that good stuff. And if you are trading, it really doesn't matter. You really don't care. You know, it, it, we could be going, you know, we could be rolling the top and getting ready to head down right now. And frankly, I'm sounds kind of messed up, but I'm excited about it. I really am. See this, this little money flow is getting lower here, although we're kind of going sideways, but we're starting to angle back down again. It's kind of exciting because like at this point, I've been saving up for this. Like I have not bought anything on spot. Nothing on spot since like since back here in this first original dip because yeah you know, I want to get it on sale uh, I I don't know about you guys because I'm like all right you know I could buy right here like maybe even even right here when we started coming back up but in the back of my head the whole time I'm gonna be wondering like all right like you know are we just gonna continue on up and go up and hit those hundred Ks that everybody's talking about. Or are we going to continue down and I'm going to be super pissed at myself for like, you know, blowing my load up here, pardon the pun, when, you know, we could be uh, getting that nice little coupon code down here at the bottom. And so, yeah, I've been watching this and the biggest thing with this is patience and, you know, not letting, you know, every little... Every little zigzag, every little oscillation kind of gets you worked up. And so, you know, I'm watching this and I'm saying, okay, well, look at that money flow. Like, yes, it is absolutely perfectly possible that it comes right back up. It could. And if that's the case, then I'll be like, crap, I wish I got in over here. But no, I'm going to keep things simple and I'm going to lean a little bit more toward... Uh, you know, the smooth movement, the smooth motion going on here, you know, whether it be like, you know, money flow, just kind of doing its nice little wavy thing, especially up here on the weekly time frame. And just looking at things overall, obviously the, uh, the large excitement, the FOMO, all that stuff just hasn't been in it. I mean, you look at the volume here, the volume is fairly well matching with the money flow curve. You know, if we had an average, it'd be something like that. And you can see, yep, we kind of peaked right here. And we're kind of going down since. So, the you know, the volume's starting to taper off. 
you know, the excitement's not there. Even though we've kind of reached a point where it's in the news, especially, you know, with the regulation stuff going on and all that. And, you know, getting the Super Bowl commercials. So it's it's gaining some notoriety. And I think we're at that stage right now where we're not necessarily getting the next batch of new investors or new traders in just yet. But it's like we've been planting the seed in their head. You know, more and more people are aware of Bitcoin, aware of crypto. And I think the next big you know, movement of people that'll be coming into it are at that stage right now where they're like, they're kind of in that wait and see, you know, there's a a lot, you know, the economy right now is very uncertain. Inflation's going up, you know, gas is going up, like food prices are getting freaking ridiculous. Like, oh my God, I just went to the grocery store yesterday. Not even going to bitch about it. But, you know, I think they're, they're waiting to see, and, you know, the smart people are realizing that, OK, you know, they having your your money, your savings, at least, you know, the bulk of it in the bank as U.S. dollars is potentially not a good idea. And they're not, you know, talking about it that that much on like the news and stuff, especially like normie mainstream news where they're not really giving people good advice. And they're being like, hey, keeping your money in dollars is literally just like being siphoned off through inflation and whatnot but the more people realize like crap like the more the longer i keep my money in dollars in this fiat you know the the less it becomes worth then uh, you know they're going to start looking for options start looking for alternatives and they will likely remember here and like well okay what is this bitcoin thing about you know i can't they've definitely heard about people making crazy money and at the same time they've also heard about people you know, the volatility and, oh, it's super risky and dangerous and it's going to go to zero. So, you know, at the least, they're probably going to be like, okay, and they're going to look into it. And there's definitely way more to look into now than there was, you know, a couple of years ago, three years ago, you know, whatever. So I think we're, we're in the lull before the next generation of like retail money coming into crypto so you know i don't really have like any spectacular expectations but it you know on its face it does seem like we potentially have a little more downside to go i mean things you know as soon as you get up here like around the daily right now i mean it's definitely not looking super bullish i mean you can't say that in any regard you know over here on the daily like what are we looking at okay so we do have you know, some momentum kind of trending up a little bit, which is, you know, representative of what we're seeing in the price. So we do got that going, but, you know, money flow coming back down, kind of hitting a sideways note at the moment, but it's a pretty low, a low sideways spot to where if we were going to, you know, come back up, I would expect it to maybe be like up here, but you know, nothing's for sure. I mean, every, everything's a, there's a first time for everything. And especially in Bitcoin and crypto, you know, I mean, just constantly seeing first times for most things, but you know, VWAP is, it's, I mean, it's low, but potentially making its way back up. We do have a little bit of bullish divergence on the VWAP on the daily. And this is Ethereum, but you know, going over basically the same thing on Bitcoin. It's just what I've happened to be looking at. You know, that's kind of interesting. Come over here, Bitcoin. We did have a bigger pullback. Oh, and speaking of, since I've been MIA here for a few days, you can see, remember, we were talking about finding support at this big chunk right there. Man, we stuck to it for a little while, stayed above it for a little while, at least this line. And then when we finally broke through, you know, hit the close on this candle right at the spider line, but we did come down to that trend line right there and man bounced on it twice we'll see what happens now i mean you look over here at the rsis we're definitely heading down but we're you know we're getting a gradual split which tells me i don't expect you know straight plummet unless something changes 
you know, VWAP is getting close to crossing back up. And again, you know, have that little bit of divergence going on right there. Momentum wave potentially turning and clipping. VWAP, I mean, the money flow not looking great. You know, we are down here in the red, but barely. So, you know, barely. If we do a quick little turnaround, you know, we might see some choppiness on the money flow. You know, when you start going from these real long, um, you know, waves right here to a short one to another short one, and you start getting real choppy, you start building up to, you know, something. So, yeah, so, I, you know, long term speaking, I'm not even I'm not even picking a direction. I'm not even picking a side at the moment. Although, you know, I would like to see it come down to start getting it for cheap. But who doesn't want to get it for cheap? And also keep in mind, you know, we're in this upward channel right here. And with upward channels, they tend to break down. So you know, we'll see about that. But... Generally speaking, they tend to break down. Now, you know, we have a downtrend and then we start getting an uptrend, very volatile uptrend. And it could just finally cut to the downside. You know, here we're kind of going down, cut back to the up. We're going up, cut to the down. So we shall see on that one, but, you know, zooming in here a little bit closer to where we're at at the moment. Check out the three hour, nah, not quite a divergence because this is a little bit higher than that low. But the money flow did kind of take a wicked turn on us. <clears throat> you know, we we're coming back up and now we're coming back down. But potentially it could just be you know, that this is our wave right here, and it just had a, I hesitate to say, a weak middle, which we have been seeing a bit of lately. You know, like, if this were the middle, we had a very weak middle up here. And it's just, in this case, the weakness would be, you know, didn't come down sooner, basically. So we shall see. You know, we're getting a couple bounces. If we keep bouncing on it, we could break through sooner than later. But we would like to at least see, you know, we'll see what happens. At least come up to that spider line, which might even coincide with, you know, that resistance level somewhere in there. That's probably my best bullish case right there. Hey, real quick, kind of off subject. I was just listening to it. And it's the first time I've actually ever noticed this. But over here on Post Malone and The Weeknd's video, one right now. Great song. If that's your thing, maybe it's not your thing, whatever. You don't like it. But if you zoom in here. And the more I zoom in, it zooms out. Um, you can see at the beginning of the video, Post has the Moon Pay app open. And he's got the... Uh, uh, what the the board ape and buying a board ape NFT right there at the beginning of the video. I was like, no shit. I'm like, I swear I never even noticed that before because I really don't even like watch the videos, but I just have it playing in the background or whatnot. But that was kind of cool, and that kind of goes with what I was talking about. You know, it's the notoriety is definitely uh, increasing, even if the retail volume is not yet. And especially with, you know, the celebrities and the NFT thing is has really hit the celebrities, even if you don't hear about it much. Like it's really it's really been hitting with the celebrities lately. I think uh, I just heard a little while back, like even Jim Jones started making uh, his own NFTs. And then you got Madonna buying a board Ape Yacht Club and a whole bunch of other people. So, um, you know, if we get more of those you know more of the the you know celebrity type class 
um, getting in on it. It's going to make it cool for other people. Make it seem cool. I don't want to say make it cool, but make it seem cool for other people. And they're going to be like, oh, yeah, you know, the, the person they follow on Twitter, blah, 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 is posting stuff about they just bought some, uh, some Dogecoin or something. I mean, you remember when we were going through that. And, you know, that's going to influence the younger generation a little bit more than anything. But it also catches the eye of, you know, people with money, especially when you get like new money people like, you know, nouveau riche type people. And they see like it's the hip thing with, you know, celebrities and people like that. And they, they want to be hip, but they don't have the slightest clue how they just, you know, maybe they're good at making money or they got lucky and they don't know what to do with it. And they start seeing that, oh, you know, like... So some movie star that they like is getting into crypto and stuff. So they started doing it. And I think we're just kind of like on the lead up to that point right now. So, you know, take the time while we're in the lull to, uh, you know, to get better at trading, get that practice in and, uh, you know, start, you know, just learning the charts, learn the price action. Cause I mean, that was the, that's the one thing that, I'm, I'm leaning towards saying that, you know, it never really stops, you know, like you have a professional, uh, all right, I'm a little partial to it. You're a professional hockey player and just throughout their whole career, they're always practicing, always trying to get better, always working on those skills and always playing, you know, scrimmage games and practice games and even real games because, you know, there, there's just always situations that are going to come up that are just slightly different that you'll have never dealt with before. And so the more you do it, the more you study the charts, the more you see how the price action is reacting and acting, then the more you learn what it's likely to do in the future when you start seeing that situation. You know, just like when we got done having... You know the big dip right here and you know we had the first leg and then we started doing this upward consolidation you know at this point you should kind of be at least paying attention to if not knowing that when you have a big dip and you start getting this upward sideways consolidation going that you're probably not done like generally speaking you know when you're done it behaves kind of a different way and usually when you're in the middle of these you know continuous uh trends to the downside when you get this you know it's just a little consolidation break before you keep continuing a little consolidation break <clears throat> keep continuing and then you start getting to you know a little bit more v-shaped ish moves and this is the one hour so let me zoom down a little bit and particularly when you start seeing like these near double bottoms you'll see like a tight one like this and that's usually like a running out of bearish pressure type situation. And you'll get a little V-shape back up and then come back down and, you know, put in a higher low is generally what you are. Whoops, I missed it. Generally what you're looking for is that higher low. And they say, okay, so there is a chance. <laughs> There's a chance that you know, we may be at the bottom, or if nothing else, at least a temporary bottom. Temporary being more than, you know, right here. Even though we kind of had that same situation right here where, you know, came in, hit the bottom, had mini V shape. And again, we had a, a wicked V right here, so can be deceiving sometimes, but, and then had that higher low right there and then continued up like more times than not the one i'm like looking for is that uh that blow off bottom where you know they say when you go sh straight up and you have that knife edge up and back down they call it a blow off top <clears throat> where it just blow out all the volume in a straight climb to the sky and then it just whew, just falls back to earth and oftentimes you know you kind of get that same situation going to the downside as well where you just end up with one gigantic candle I'm not saying that it was over here but you know when you see that it can also often indicate a bottom you know kind of had a similar situation right there but you know it wasn't a giant one i mean this was still just three percent i mean you might see like a five six percent 
single candle. I mean, it can get crazy, but <clears throat> it's not going to happen every time. That's I'll, tell, I'll say that. Like, I've definitely noticed. Like, if we were to go back to previous, let's see. So here was the bottom. You can see this one had a a big straight drop. Still wasn't you know one giant candle. Although we did have a couple of big ones right there, about two thirds of the way through, but. You know 12.3 percent and then you come back and look you know even our biggest section right here seven so despite you know everybody thinking that uh, maybe the world was ending or something like that you know we kind of had a similar situation going on here but we still Seemed like we had this false bottom with the V coming back up. Money flow was coming back up, but it was kind of like I was saying a minute ago. You know, you start getting to that choppy money flow before. Yeah, similar situation there. Nice little rebound coming off of it, but I remember this one. This one was kind of a freak incident. Because it was it was realistically kind of like we had the bottom there, and we already started this uptrend when we got that you know crazy dip, and then shot right back up to where you know basically where it had already been heading. So that one was almost a bit of an anomaly, but yeah, you know, look at at that downtrend. And still coming off the back of a fairly long sideways downtrend. But even for this being kind of moderate, you know, ended in a spike. Ended in a spike. That was a short one. You know, we really haven't had a spike on this one yet. You know, we had a, a decently, sh you know straight downtrend there but we haven't spiked back up you know usually you know you at least come back up to like one of these previous highs so i'm kind of expecting more to the downside But let's see, what were we talking about again? Oh, yeah, so some of the lingo. You know, if you are unfamiliar with <clears throat> uh, HODL, may have heard me say it, probably heard other people say it. That is, hold on for dear life. So when they say, uh, you might see people with like the Bitcoin hat that says HODL on it, you know, H-O-D-L. Basically, that's coming from... It came from before the whole Wall Street bets thing, but it really got popularized during the the Wall Street bets meme stock kind of craze that was going on, and people were saying, you know, hold the line, hodl, diamond hands. And it's basically just saying, you know, because they were talking about doing uh, going long when there was doing the short squeeze and all that, and they were saying like, you know, no matter what it does, don't sell, don't sell, keep it going, and so hold on for dear life you're clinging on to it you're not selling for nothing you're getting, planning on holding it for 10 20 50 years <clears throat> so yeah so that's hodling which oftentimes you might hear me use it interchangeably with like long-term investing partially because you just kind of get used to saying it but you know if you are buying bitcoin and just stashing it away putting it on the cold storage wallet <clears throat> you know planning on not selling it for nothing you're, you're gonna hang on to it for 20 years until it's you know worth 500 grand or something like that that's hodling and even though you might have a lot of people that talk smack about that at the same time I, I guarantee you just about anybody you are watching following or listening to <clears throat> even if they are trading I, I guarantee they got some bitcoin and some ethereum and some other stuff you know stashed away on some wallets or on a wallet somewhere that 20 years from now they're going to come back like oh look how much that's worth 
Let's see. Oh. Yeah, look at Shib. I forgot that was one I wanted to mention. While everybody else was doing ugly, it was doing uh, it was doing a little something. Had a little pump in there. What do we get? Thirty-seven percent. I mean, granted, it's pretty much over now. You know, this is actually a good example right here, talking about the uh, like the GameStop and the meme stock stuff and the Wall Street bets little craze fad that was going on for a minute. That's what they were looking like right there. That is a textbook shape for like a retail FOMO. And if you don't know what FOMO, it is fear of missing out. So when you start seeing things pumping, they're they're shooting up to the sky, they're going to the moon, and you're like, oh my God, you know, everybody on social media is talking about it, everybody's buying in, everybody's, you know, cashing their chips, trying to get in on it. And so... You feel like you should be getting in on it too. And that is the fear of missing out. You you feel like, oh my God, everybody knows something. It's, it's You know, it's going up, it's going up, it's going to keep going up. People are making all these crazy price predictions. And you feel like you're missing out, you know, FOMO. So you buy in, you know, maybe by the time you, you know, you get get some money on your coinbase account or something like that you go you buy it maybe it's already pumped up to here and you're sitting there like rubbing your hands like oh yeah look at that it's still going up it's still going up it's still going up shit and then you get dropped out and then next thing you know you're down here and you're like okay 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 let's come back up let's come back up and then you start pulling down again and at that point you have to make that decision do you cut your losses you know, remember, say you bought here, do you cut your losses here or do you try to ride it out? A lot of people try to ride it out, but I've been there myself. Been a little while because I don't do that dumb crap no more. But, you know, next thing you know, it's just you know, all the way back to where you started. And now you're like, ah, oh, crap, like, all right, I'm down that much. Like, I guess we're holding on to it for forever and a day until it comes, you know, back up somewhere above that point and then a lot of people you know they'll hold on to it for a long long time until it comes back up and then finally gets above that point you know takes one little pull back and they're like all right and they sell it and yeah you know you sold it for i'm going the wrong way you know they sold it for a, a three and a half percent profit and then sure enough, you know, right after that, it has its little, whoops, you know, it has its little pullback and then sh continues on up. Very, 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 very common story. I think I had that happen one time with the, with a stock that was getting all pumped up and everything and almost the exact same story. It sold it for a profit still. And then once you know it, like, Six months after I had sold it, which I had already held on to it for like six months. Six months after I finally got rid of it, you know, at a profit, it uh, shot right up and it would have been like 200%. I'm like, oh, I gotta be fucking kidding me. <laughs> Them's the breaks. So, you know, if you're, if you're getting in on the, the meme coins and the meme stocks and the retail FOMO like that, just... Be prepared because this shape right here, this pattern, is more often than not what you're going to see. You're going to see this little blow off top. Then you're going to see a pullback and you're going to see a second chance. This is going to be like your, your last chance to, to get rid of it, you know, at a high. Depending on where you got in, might be good, might be bad, but isn't there? Yeah, there is. And then after that, it tends to, you know, it tends to come down and maybe be around like, uh, you know, let's get an actual number here. Yep, be right around like this 618 retracement. And then maybe, no, stop. I'm just going to delete you. You know, you come back down here or something, hit, take the bounce and then. It'll take a while. It'll come back down, you know, a lot slower. 
but it'll eventually you know come back to the area that it was previously trending around and i'll bet you oh look at that what do you know there it is there's the shape in case you didn't believe me look at that there it is pull it back down came back up a little bit now granted you know a higher time frame there's the possibility that it eventually kind of continues back up but like I was saying, if if the overall market does come down and we are in a bear market, you can expect this thing to come down here. And then if you want to get into some Shiba Inu, you know, then maybe it might be worth it. And only if uh, <clears throat> you know retail sentiment is still strong enough that you know, people are going to bring it back next bull market. Let's see what's up with Doji. What's up with Doji coin? See, now this one's interesting. <clears throat> and I think this is partly due to the whole Elon Musk effect here. But, you know, similar situation, you know, decent pullback. But, you know, even though it is kind of generally coming back down to maybe a fair value price it has held its value you know better than uh, SHIB and I think that's largely because A it was the first you know it was the first meme coin and B because it got the amount of publicity that it did and you know largely thank you to Elon Musk on that one well, it looks like we broke that potential trend line right there. It's kind of ugly no matter how you slice it. But I guess at that point, we'll just keep the channel. Yeah, I got a little fib channel on this one here. On the daily, on the Ave. Looks like, what is that? Came back down to the 382, finding some support. So how's your guys' day going? How you know how you guys doing? Let me know. What have uh you know? Did you guys get in on the uh, on the dip? Anybody get some good shorts in there? Kind of wish I did, but. At the same time, that kind of defeats the purpose of taking the weekend off, taking a break. I actually was going to do a video yesterday, and oh my gosh, dude, I ate too much dinner, and I fell asleep. I woke up, it was like, oh, it was like 10.30 or something like that. And I'm like, uh, if I go up there, by the time I get it together and do the thumbnail and all that and make the video, I was like, I'm going to end up pushing it right up until past when I was trying to go to bed and I really wasn't trying to do that because I was trying to watch a movie because I've been catching up on my horror movies specifically on like my ghost and haunted movies and stuff and so what the heck did I watch uh, brain fart I don't know I forgot I don't know if you can hear the little wolf over here growling at somebody, but man, I was walking her after I got home from work today and we're going and I happen to be looking at my phone. We're coming down like the last street back toward the house and I just hear like this little like, like, and I'm like, what the hell? And I look over and some dude's dog was just, like running around in his front little front yard, like tiny little yard and uh, didn't have a leash on and must have like ran up to her. And her tail was wagging, but she just kind of like uh, one of the two yep. I don't even know if it was her. It really didn't necessarily sound like her, but you know, it wasn't like they were snarling or anything like that. And the guy comes walking up to kind of grab his dog, and mine had already turned, you know, started walking back down the roads. And the guy's like, start hey, keep your dog out of my yard, blah blah. Like, dude, her front paws were on like just in the dirt beyond the curb. And I'm like, just looking at this guy and like instantly just kind of my hackles go up and I'm like, dude, this dude is not talking shit. And 
And then he's like, oh, you need to keep her, keep her dog on a shorter leash. I'm like, like the, the freaking thing was only out like three or four feet anyways. And so like I just turned and I look and, and I'm like, she is on a leash. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try to keep all the cursing out of this because once I get amped up, I tend to curse like every other word. But I'm just like, basically, I said that, you know, she is. And I'm like, well, what about your dog? Like, where the fuck is your dog's leashed in if you're going to sit here and fucking talk shit? That's so sorry. I can't even tell the damn story without cursing. And so, and like, and I could tell this dude's kind of coming up. Like, I just looking at him, like, you could tell somebody who's the type that, you know, they got too much pride to where they're not just going to shut up and back down. But at the same time, like, you could kind of see in somebody's eyes, like, they, they weren't trying to, they weren't about that life. And so I'm just like, all right, I just, I bite my lip and I'm just like, all right, come on, come on. Let's just, let's just keep walking. Because <clears throat> like, oh man, he's just gonna keep pushing. If he keeps pushing me, I'm my mouth is gonna fly off. And at that point, you know, you get somebody who's too proud, they're not gonna appreciate that kind of uh instigation or language. And last thing I need is somebody calling the damn cops because dude got beat up for running his mouth. Or god forbid the dog gets involved because yeah, that that's she is not small. So, yeah, so that was my afternoon. Man, I almost got worked up just thinking about it again. But other than that, it's been pretty good. It's nice. It's uh it's been doing it's been threatening to rain all day, but never did. But it's definitely had a nice breeze. So I appreciate that. Cause I think it was like 80 degrees and humid, but that breeze just kind of kept it from being too crazy. I mean to click that one. We got Phantom coming up into the green a little bit. Starting to get this split to the upside. I'm seeing that in a bunch of them. This one even worse. Now that's interesting. Polka dot. Look at them RSIs coming back together. Money flow coming up. Damn, that's that's actually it's not looking bad. How's that compare to, you know, ETH kind of doing the same thing? We could see this guy trending to the upside for a little bit here. You know, volume coming down real low. So maybe getting ready to kind of break out of this little half ass pattern right here. Potentially, potentially. We got, oh man, 45 minute. Look at that. That's ugly though. I mean, money flow is technically coming up, but you're kind of getting this action cutting sideways at the moment, but it still could head up. You know, view up took a little bounce still on the upside, but RSI looking ugly. Let's see, what's the hourly looking like? Yeah, that split is increasing. Been watching that guy for a couple hours. So increasing split right there makes me skeptical. Gets the skepticisms going. Can't really see the money flow. No, I don't even know what that line is. I just kind of going. I just kind of flatlining on the downside. Not not super great to tall. Today. Kind of reeks of sideways niche. Sideways just schnish. Holy crap, that's hard to say. It, you know, you'd almost think it's like a trigger wave, and I'm, I've been wondering that for like the last couple hours here, back when we were like right after the green dot. And technically, it is still acting like it might be. <clears throat> we'll see what this RSI does. It's not to say that it's not going to go up more. For example, just back here, you know, RSI was splitting pretty good, but that still would have been a decent, decent little scalp out of that. <clears throat> I mean, even if you tried to hold it long term, you really weren't going to do any better. Almost be better off grabbing two of them. Just got to be careful right now because technically we're still in a little bit of a downtrend on the macro side, so. You know, unless this is reversing, but 
it's a little early to be calling all that. You know, it looks very much like this situation right here. You know, you see what we had there. See what we have here. We shall see. It could be... Kind of depends when we get this, you know, middle of the road pullback right there. You know, if it stays within a little channel like we did up here, you know, we might have more to the upside. Probably will have more to the upside if it does that. But, you know, if we're coming out and it, obviously you have to come up a little bit in order to get that bigger pullback. But, you know, as long as we generally stay around this trend line. You know, we should have some more upward consolidation unless we finally get some bullish volume. But otherwise, that's uh, that's my guess at the moment. Let's see, how long did this one take? Four days. What was this one? Eh, about four days. This is a short one here, three day. Pump, pump the jam. Five day. Just kind of measuring out some of these consolidations. Just to say, yeah, we weren't even really getting them back there. So just out of what few we have had lately. Yeah, no, that's most reasonable. You know, even if we kind of bump this guy back a little bit i don't know i'll leave it there we'll see what happens even though it's god awful ugly so that's about it i'm not going to take this too much longer nice to be back nice to talk to you guys thank you the um, all you guys who've been throwing shout outs in there throwing comments in there potentially got an interesting video coming up uh, I think it's this Friday. I really suck at dates. If, the, if this Friday is good Friday, then might have something cool and interesting coming for you with, with one of you guys being involved. So, you know, looking forward to that. And hopefully, uh, you know, people watching people see it. Seems interesting to you too. Maybe you want to be a part of it. Maybe we get something going. But otherwise, remember to continue being a badass. Because you should have started being a badass by now if you're watching the psychology videos. If you haven't, go watch that shit. And remember, you need to be the badass. Walk with your chest out, shoulders back, chin up. Ah, all right, I'm not going to keep swearing. But you get the point. Do that shit. Um, stay free. Stay happy. Life's too short. Enjoy it. And I'll see you back tomorrow. <laughs>